Hi, in this video, we want to take a look at preference modeling, specifically when we're talking about the case where we have paired comparisons. All right, so imagine the situation where our data is, do you prefer A or do you prefer B? Then, do you prefer A or do you prefer C? Do you prefer B or do you prefer C? And then go through a whole bunch of different combinations. All right, so this is called paired comparisons. And uh, in fact, this is like one system for voting that we potentially could use if uh, we chose to do so. Um, the reason why this is usually not used in voting systems is because it takes a long time, a lot of iterations. That's why we use plurality instead almost always. Uh, but with paired comparisons, there are situations where, uh, like let's say, like uh, companies want to see like which product is more preferred for marketing, which one would be a better one uh, to present to the consumer. And they'll ask subjects, do you like uh, product A or do you like product B? Do you like product B or do you like product D? And so on. And so when we get a, a whole lot of uh, iterations of this and we're on a whole bunch of different subjects and all the different combinations that we can get, then we need to analyze it. We need to see which one is the preferred one overall. Also, we would like to figure out, hmm, if I have covariate data, which ones, which covariate features result in the highest preference or the least preference? That way, I can, for future projects, I can use that knowledge to get what is preferred more and what's uh, like disliked less, right? Okay, so, how we're going to approach this for this video is we're going to look at Bradley Terry models. All right, so we're going to look at three different types of uh, Bradley Terry models. First one is going to be based off of logistic regression. Now, it's technically not logistic regression, but that's the right way to think about it. Second one is going to be using trees. And then the third one is going to be using lasso. All right, so uh, each of these have very different structure and they have advantages and disadvantages. So we just kind of need to, um, you know, just be mindful of all of them and pick the one that works the best for our situation. All right, so the first one is going to be based off of logistic regression. Now, it's technically not logistic regression. There is a mathematical difference, but it's the right way to think about it if you're not going to start working out all the details on pencil and paper. Just think it's fitted similar to logistic regression. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to take band data. So somebody went through and they asked, do you prefer Slayer or do you prefer, prefer Rush? Slayer or Death, Slayer or Emperor, Slayer or Scorpions, then Rush or Death. I would definitely pick Rush over Death, right? <laughs> uh, rush over Emperor, Rush over Scorpions, and so on. They went through all the possible combinations. Now, when we have all possible combinations, that definitely gives us you know, a, a lot of insight into it. So this is going to be a, a complete pair comparison study. Now, there are situations where I have so many levels and I have so few iterations, I cannot possibly go through all possible pairs. All right, that's gonna be an incomplete paired comparisons. All right, so if I have all possible comparisons, then I can be a lot more confident when I am uh, making my choice about which one to go with and which ones to exclude. If it's incomplete, then really I'm gonna need more statistics to be able to wade through that, to make sure I'm making the right decision. And that's where the Bradley Terry models come in. All right, so here we've got all of our data. And it's nice that we have 200 for each of the paired comparisons. That makes things, you know, we, we don't have like a strong emphasis on one or the other. All right, so what we're gonna do, under the hood, R is gonna reshape the data set in a manner so that it can be fitted in the same manner as logistic regression. All right, and we're gonna call this a Bradley Terry model. And it's, called, it's from the BTM function from the Bradley Terry 2 package. All right, so how do we set this up? Inside the function, I say the outcome is just the columns, a two column uh, matrix or data frame of which one is preferred. And then I have to give the name uh, so this is a vector. This vector tells uh, R what is the name of the ones on the left. This vector gives tells R the names of the column on the right. And then this is the data set altogether. 
All right, and so when I fit this, it will go through and give it to me. All right, so now, after we get it, we need the coefficients because the coefficients are what we're truly interested in. Okay, so here, it's called ability. So it, you can think of it, for this model, this is similar to uh, like a logistic regression with just an intercept term. So it's gonna be a constant. And so the intercept coefficients correspond to uh, the actual ability. So uh, <clears throat> and now there is a, a, a bit of log and exponential transform between the two, but conceptually, this is where it's coming from. All right, so to get the abilities, all I do is I just pass the model into it, into the BT abilities function, and it spits it out for us. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at what we got. All right, the first thing I want you to notice about this is that Slayer has zero, zero. All right, what's going on there? All right, so remember, just like when we're talking about race models, for this type of model structure, for it to be for the linear algebra aspect to be fitted, we have to have a reference level. Otherwise, the uh, matrix side of the computation is not going to work. So what the system does, it picks one of the levels to be like a reference level. So here we can see that Slayer was the very first band in that data set, right? And so it does not estimate its ability. It does not, uh, it does not estimate the coefficient, or sorry, the standard error of the ability. All right, so every, all the other numbers we have for ability are in reference to Slayer. So, uh, you know, so since Slayer is the baseline, that's how I can compare them. Now, it's gonna work out that the larger one is always gonna be you know, uh, like the more dominant odds compared to the other ones. Uh, you know, so we know that Rush is the most favored overall. We know that Death is second. Then Emperor is second to last. And then Scorpion is last. Now, something that you'll notice that the standard error is relatively constant for all of them, uh, for all of the abilities. And that's coming from the fact that we have a pretty even design in terms of number of iterations. Okay, so remember this is coming from like a logistic regression aspect. So if I want to actually get uh, the values so that I can start doing things and working with, with odds directly, I have to get away from the logarithm aspect and I just do an exponential transform on it. And boom, we get the alpha values. Okay, so now if I want to figure out the probability that one would be uh, preferred over the other, what I would do, if I want to know the probability that scorpions will be preferred over emperor, I take 0.73 and I divide that by 0.73 plus 0.98, okay? So you take this value and you divide it by the sum of these two to know the, the likelihood, the model likelihood that Scorpion will be preferred over Emperor. Now, if I want to know the likelihood that Rush will be preferred over Death, I take this value and I divide it by these two values added together. And that gives me the model likelihood that Rush would be preferred. Okay. And you'll notice that Slayer has a one since it is the baseline. Now, if I want to talk about odds, all I do is just go through and do the division, and that gives me the odds of that, if, if you're comfortable with that aspect of probability. Usually people are uh, more comfortable with a probability between zero and one, so I, I would recommend working with these directly, you know, uh, but whatever works for you. So in terms of odds, we can see that Rush is, you know, about 1.2 over depth for preference. Now remember, odds is not on the same scale as, prob as probabilities and likelihoods, since those are always on zero to one. Odds can go from you know, zero to potentially infinity. All right, so now that tells me what is the overall preference of each of the individual bands. That doesn't tell me any deeper aspect. That doesn't tell me why one is preferred over the other. Now, I want to do something a little bit different now. So the first model tells me about overall over the entire sample population. Next one is something I would use in customer segmentation. Let's say that I want to find a uh, segment of the population 
that is going to have a strong preference for one over the uh, over others and i don't and i just want to know what that group is and what their preference is so if i'm doing let's say i'm a company i'm thinking about making uh, a new product to send out what i could do i could use the covariates to find subgroups that uh, have a strong preference for a particular product and then i could do customer segmentation on that okay so when i use Bradley Terry trees, we're looking at the relationship between covariates and preferences. All right, so what we're trying to do, we're trying to use tree models to find fine grained subgroup combinations that influence the preferences. What that is trying to say is I'm trying to find, uh, I'm trying to use this, the covariances on the subjects to figure out what do they, like, if there is a subgroup that has a strong preference somewhere, and that way I could use that group I could, I could target that group for that particular product. All right, so let's go ahead and let's go with Top Model 2007. This is from like a German Top Model TV show. Uh, before this video, I never heard of it. Um, I don't watch much TV, so I don't know. And especially in German. I, I can read it if I have to, but I don't want to. Um, I can't speak it, so I don't watch German TV. All right, so here's my data set. And we can see that we've got our preferences coded as plus one and minus one, depending on which one is preferred. So it's always a plus one and a minus one. And up top in the column header, we can see that it's a preference, subject one, subject two, subject one or subject three, subject two or subject three, subject one or subject four, all the way down to subjects five and six. Okay, so now I, you'll notice I have these for every single subject. Everything, every single subject has given me this information. So next, I have the subjects that are giving the information, they're saying, they're reporting their preference. This is not the, it is not the item that's being preferred. This is about the subject that is uh, giving their preference. So here's the, uh, the subject's gender, age, and then aspects of their TV watching. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to build a tree model. And so when I do this, I'm going to use the psycho tree package. And I'm going to do a Bradley Terry tree. Now, something you will notice about this, this function needs mob from the party kit package. So either I have to load the entire package of party kit, or I can just grab one item. I chose to grab one item. That way it prevents package confusion. All right, so now, when I have the data in this special format, so it is critical that I have this special format. And you'll notice that the column header starts with preference. I put in a formula, preference depends on the covariates, and then I say what data I have. Something that is important about this is that you'll notice the format that I have. I have preference, same name in the formula, dot, then I have first subject, colon, second subject. So name in the formula, dot, first subject, colon, second subject. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so off of this, what this is saying, this tree says, if I was to split all of the subjects into two groups, the variable, the, in, uh, the, most effective manner for this purpose will be to split on age. So we would split up with people older than 52 and people uh, less than or equal to 52 in age. All right, so we can see that it, for the older population, they prefer Barbara, I guess. I don't know. I, I can't remember what the names are, but BRB. I, I have to go look and sort of change this stuff around. All right, so we can see right off the bat that there's kind of a stronger preference for the BRB model. And we see that the second person really is not liked by that, that group. And then the rest are just kind of like, eh, all, you know, same level of like, dislike. So if I wanted to, uh, pr so let's say I wanted to run commercials targeted at, uh, old, at an older population, I would want to have commercials that involve the BRB model in there. 
because he or she is going to be a lot more popular. All right, so that way, hopefully, I could get like more viewers from the older population. Now, what if we're talking about younger people? Okay, so then the next one is about their viewership. Like, and this was a yes, no uh, question. And it's about how much they watch TV. And those who uh, say yes, they have a strong preference for, I think it's Hannah. And you can see they have a really strong preference for Hannah. And then, you know, the, the others kind of, there's a, kind of a linear decline between them. But Hannah is like t the bee's knees with them. Now, when I go with gender, it looks like Hannah and the next one over, which is not labeled because of space constraints, it are the ones that are the most popular with males. When we're, or, so we're talking about younger males who have less uh, TV watching prefer these two models. Now, when I look at females, so here I'm younger females with less TV watching, they prefer the BRB also. So if I could use, so this is a way for me to be able to target each of these groups. Now also I see that 56, this is the you know, this is a decent sized node, and so is 71. So, if I wanted to start running commercials to get people to watch, you know, to, to keep watching the show, Hana would be a good choice here. If I if I can target males, so maybe I might put it on uh, like with sporting commercials with the sporting events, and here I would go with BRB if I want to target younger females and just older people in general. And so this, this kind of gives me a plan of action on how to do a marketing campaign. Next one we can talk about is using Lasso. So Lasso, what it does is it applies a penalty for large coefficients. And Lasso specifically uses the one norm. If we're talking about Ridge, it uses the two norm for the penalty. If you don't know what this is, don't worry about it. Just know that there's a penalty applied for big values for big coefficients. And so if I have a super, super, super large penalty, it's going to actually push out all the variables out. And so what Lasso will do, it will find like a kind of a sweet spot between pushing uh, covariates out and keeping covariates in. So, you know, if I have all my covariates in, I'm prone to overfitting. If I push all of them out, then I really don't have a model. Somewhere in between is a sweet spot. The goal of Lasso is to find that sweet spot. Okay, so once again, we're trying to see the relationship between covariates and preferences. But here, we want to describe the global influence of covariances on preferences. So previously with trees, I was interested in finding subgroups. Now here, what I want to do, I want to find what is the impact of a covariate. So what I could do, is this one is going to be would be better if I want to change features of the subject being evaluated. And so once again, we have our preferences, but here you'll notice that I have to reshape everything. So I put it into a matrix format and then I split it up. And so basically I'm doing a lot of data prep to get this into the format that this function will accept it. And so I get it into this format here. You'll notice that I've taken gender, I've taken age, but I've also standardized them. So negative, you know that it's below average, below the mean. Positive, you know it's greater than the mean. Gender, all right, so that's going to be a zero, one binary vector. And so this is rescaled values so that uh, we have, you know, plus or minus the same value to get uh, an evenness going on. All right, so why do I do this? Because Lasso is going to interpret uh, coefficients in, like I want to standardize things because of that penalty aspect of Lasso. I want standardized uh, column standard deviation to make sure that one, call, one predictor, one covariate doesn't get pushed out because of the size of the values instead of its uh, informative value. And so next, we do a little bit more data prep where we have subject IDs, and then we take their first and, uh, first and second 
for which model is being evaluated. All right, so to get this, I need response Brady Terry Lasso model. My response is the vector of preferences. So in my notation, whenever you see a V, you know that's a vector. And then subject is the ID vector. And then V first is a vector of the first model under consideration. And then I have second object is the vector of the second model under consideration. And then I'm gonna go through a sequence. All right, so here, this lambda that I'm talking about on this point is part of the penalty factor. What Lasso is going to do, it's gonna go over all the potential penalty values and try to find the one that gives us the best overall model. Well, to do that, we're gonna go over a grid of values and we're gonna use the sequence function to achieve that. And when I'm all, when, after I've done that, I'm gonna use cross-validation to find what I feel is the best way. I'm gonna do five-fold cross-validation. So I've got the response vector going, or the output from the model up here. Then I'm gonna get the covariates. I'm gonna go over the grid values of the penalty, and I'm gonna do five-fold cross-validation, and I'm gonna suppress most of the output because otherwise we're just gonna have a bunch of stuff spit out on the screen that I'm really not even gonna look at anyway. I would look at it if I was doing a real project, but um, you know, for the video, it's, it's just gonna distract you. All right, so now let's go ahead and look at the output. So I'm just gonna print the values by calling the object. We can see that we had uh, 192 subjects, six objects, so six models, uh, and we had two response categories, so it's one or the other. We don't have three options, we only have two. We have five covariates, and then these are uh, specific types of covariates, and we don't have any ordered effects either. And so we end up having 20 different tuning parameters. Okay, so how do we get that? Well, I have five subjects, or five covariates going on. You can see one, two, three, four, five, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, different, uh, you know, subjects or uh, models going on. And so all together, we have all these different covariates in there. And the reason why we have only 20 is because if I take one covariate out, I take one model out, you'll see that I've got 20 covariate, uh, 20 coefficients left. Um, specific. So because of the whole reference level aspect, one of the covariates is, is getting lost, one of the models is getting uh, lost also in this tuning parameter aspect. All right, now let's go ahead and plot it. And so here we can see for each of the covariates, when does it get kicked out? Now we have multiple models. So something to realize is that I have I, like the model is actually pretty complicated because we have a coefficient for each individual model going on. And so here, this shows like over to the left, we have fewer coefficients being included. The values could be kicked out as being zero. Over here, if I look at Q1, this is just going to be like the intercept term only. If I look at Q3, only the intercept term is here if I choose that lambda value. Now, if I want to find the sweet spot, so the far right, I have a lot more terms in my model. My far left, I have no, ter I have fewer terms in my model. The sweet spot is where the red is. And we found the sweet spot by cross-validation. Now, something I can do is if I want to get confidence interval on these coefficients, I can use uh, bootstrapping. Now, why is it that I'm using bootstrapping? Well, there's enough complicated structure in here that we don't fully know the mathematical structure of what's going on. So whenever we do like regular linear regression, logistic regression, we make assumptions about our statistical distributions that we're working with. And if those, if those assumptions are correct, then automatically I get uh, features about the coefficients where I can do hypothesis testing. 
Well, we're in the situation where we don't trust those assumptions. Since I don't trust those assumptions, I can't use theory to give me a confidence interval. What we're going to do instead, we're going to do random sampling to, gener to regenerate the coefficients. And then we're going to take that, take the uh, you know, random resampling to, you know, uh, to give us a repeated values of the coefficients. And, that's, and we're going to use those repeated values to give us confidence intervals. All right, and we can see that for the intercept, you know, uh, uh, you know, Ani, is, it might be zero. Okay. Now, when we talk about gender, Fiona maybe, you know, might have zero as the, the gender coefficient. Hana has, you know, might have uh, zero for the age coefficient. And, you know, and we can see, like, the difference for each of these. And so remember when also if a model is going up in likelihood to be selected, that means that comparatively another one is going down. It has to work out that way since this is a preference modeling. This is, uh, you know, uh, this is a winners and losers aspect. If I was to change things up in a future study so that Mandy went up, then I know that the preference for the other models would, could, would have to overall go down. Um, so that is something to be mindful of when we're doing this, that if somebody's going up, somebody else is going down, somebody's going down, somebody's going up. If I'm tinkering with things to improve a particular aspect. All right, well, that's all I've got for you. Take care and goodbye.